Who's making these tracks? We're in the woods. Is this a rabbit or a squirrel? There's another one. And another. Hi friends. <laughs> Welcome to our Wilderness Basics series. We want to create a fun place for you to learn super basic nature, bushcraft, and wilderness skills. Liliana, you've been working on some tracking stuff with me lately. And today we wanted to present to you the difference between squirrel tracks and rabbit tracks. And this is actually a little bit trickier than some people might think, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we have some ways that we feel like we can make it pretty clear, including a cool demo of understanding how they move, which you're yeah. going to do for us. But with any track that we're trying to identify, what we're trying to get is ID identification reliability. And in the case of our squirrels and our rabbits, you guys probably can't see them, but we have some tracks over here. I want to be able to look down and pretty instantly say, ah, I know exactly what I'm seeing. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. One way to train ourselves into this is by looking. So I might look and say, oh, I think that's a squirrel track. And Liliana would say, nope, that's a rabbit track. <laughs> and when she does that, and we do that over and over and over, I develop over time, if I have a reliable guide, an ability to just recognize those tracks. However, I usually cannot explain how I recognize them and can only train other people into that method by going through that same process. So instead today, we are going to give you the methods to identify the different tracks so that you can train yourself in, but explain to others exactly why that track is rabbit or is squirrel. A couple important things to understand. First of all, these guys have an odd way of moving, of leaving tracks, right? Yeah. And that's probably the first thing we have to understand, which is going to require a demo by you to explain it in words. When they are traveling forward and we look at a set of tracks, these guys are going to leave their tracks in a set of four prints, a back foot and a back foot and a front foot and a front foot. When they're traveling forward, what's weird about their track? So their front paws, um, well, their back paws come up above or oh, it's really hard. Hard to explain, Should isn't go... it? <laughs> the back feet are in front and yeah, the front go... feet are in back. This does not seem to make sense. But what we're going to do here is we're going to have Liliana demo how they move. So you can see how in each track, her front feet are in the back, her back feet are in the front. Once we understand that, then we come to one of the key identifying features. And Liliana is going to draw some tracks in the snow to show us what we're looking for that's going to be the main thing we're looking for when we say, is this squirrel or is this rabbit? But we have to qualify this big time and we'll explain why afterwards. But first, let's have her show us. Here we've got the first track. Those are the back feet. These are the front feet. Okay, so can you draw the line for us, Liliana? Okay. If we draw a line through the front feet, we create a diagonal. That's our rabbit. If we draw a line through the front feet, it's going to be parallel to the back feet. If we drew a line through those, that is the squirrel. All right, now that you've seen those two and you understand the diagonal line rather than the line straight across, we have to recognize that we can never look at one grouping there 
of the front and back feet and say, this is rabbit or this is squirrel. And the reason why is that there's extreme variation. A rabbit is not always going to put its feet diagonally, is it? No. Sometimes it puts them right next to each other like a squirrel. Let's notice the variation in these rabbit tracks. This is not only all rabbit, but it's all the same rabbit. Now here's the typical one that we showed you, but this is a rabbit track as well. So is this. See how close those front feet are together? How about this one for a change? We continue up. This is the same direction and you can see here the front feet have registered in front. In a squirrel, are they always going to put it next to each other? No. No. Sometimes they diagonal. Here we can see a squirrel. But look at this. Super diagonal. Those front feet. So now we have our key identifying characteristic and we're telling you that that key identifying characteristic <laughs> isn't always correct. So that means that not only are we going to make sure that we look at multiple groupings of the track. So we're going to look at the track line. We're going to follow it for a while and we're going to see, oh, is it diagonal, 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 diagonal? Now we're feeling pretty good about rabbit, right? Mm -hmm. If we have diagonal, together, 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 diagonal, together, 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 we're pretty sure it's squirrel. Yes. And that is pretty reliable. But we also need to look for sign. So we're going to go over a couple different kinds of sign that we can look for. All right. What is one of the most important kinds of sign that we're looking for? Poop. Poop. Let's go look for poop. Did you find some poop? Yeah. Aha! There's all, look at all this stuff going on. Right here, we have a beautiful piece of rabbit poop. Liliana, doesn't this rabbit poop look, I don't know, it looks like something you'd make cereal out of. Put it in a bowl with some milk. Sound delicious? Yeah! If I was... <laughs> A dog. A dog? <laughs> that <laughs> Maybe that's a great sign because Finbar just loves rabbit poop, doesn't he? Eats it like it's a treat. But then again, he goes and he eats other kinds of, let's say, deer poop as well. And there's nothing quite like horse, is there? Yes. <laughs> Check this out, though. This is basically made out of, well, wood and plant material. Looks like little wood chip <laughs> balls and you can see lots of them in here lots of groups of them but the thing to understand about this rabbit poop rabbits are a little different than deer right deer yeah. they when they poop out comes a big blop of of 30 40 pellets but what yeah. do rabbits do they basically poop while they move so they're sorry one little poop and then it's a little girl Poop. Yeah. yeah, so I just kind of walk along. Poop. 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 Like that. <laughs> you look less than impressed with my demo. Not quite like your demo, was it? Not as impressive? <laughs> your expressions are priceless. So look at this, everybody. Now... This might give you a clue as to what kind of a tree we're dealing with here. So what do we have, Liliana? Well, we have rabbits ravenously chewing on a tree. Rabbits rabbitously <laughs> chewing <laughs> <laughs> on an apple tree. So, so we can see the branch broke and put this in reach of the rabbits. This is a bonanza for them. 
when they chew on these trees, they're going after the bark, you can see it looks really rough. And what is this? We've got this telltale sign all over the place. Check this out. Here is the breakfast cereal. Everywhere we look. Oh, that's a really good breakfast. That is a great droplet, isn't it? Yeah, this is really good. We're seeing different sizes that Liliana is pointing out here. And that's going to be, we can have different size rabbits, but we can also have differences in what they've been eating. So whatever they've been eating is going to dictate sometimes size of droplets and consistency and color and what we actually see inside of there. Well, look at this. So we have a blackberry cane here. Can you see how somebody cut it with a knife? It's actually a rabbit. Yes, it is a rabbit. And that is a characteristic 45 degree cut that looks like somebody did it with a knife. But it's a rabbit. But it's a rabbit, yep. They have sharp teeth on top and bottom. They actually have two sets of teeth on the top, oddly. But <laughs> we won't go into that right now. But we will go into that sharp, sharp 45 degree angle that is a characteristic mark of the rabbit. Okay, so another very key identifying characteristic for squirrel tracks. Squirrel tracks will sometimes come right up to the side of a tree and then what happens to them? Disappear. They disappear. And what's going on there? What's the difference between the rabbits and the squirrels, of course? Rabbits cannot climb trees. So here's where squirrels have come down to dig for nuts. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Conventional wisdom says that they remember where they put their nuts, but studies have shown that they dig up other squirrels' nuts as often as their own, and the conclusion is that probably they are smelling or otherwise sensing them under the ground. So now you have tools in hand, tools in mind, to go out and look at those tracks, look at single little sets of the prints, look at the whole track line, look at sign, and you should be able to say, ah, that's rabbit. Now, whenever you see one that you know is rabbit, you've looked at different signs, you figured it out, look at a bunch of them, get them set into your mind. That's going to train you into that identification reliability where you eventually can just look over and say, that's right, that's what it is. Do the same with squirrel. When you found a line that you know is squirrel, look at them. Just say, that squirrel, that squirrel, that squirrel, that squirrel. It's going to do the same thing. And after a while, maybe a week of that, you're going to be able to look, even from a distance, look over and see, aha, I know what that is. And then go and see if you can verify it based on sign, based on the tracks. Tell us in the comments what tracks you've been seeing on your adventures. Yeah, that would be fun to hear what you've been seeing out there. All right, thanks for watching my friends, and we'll talk with you in the comments. <laughs> Love to you all.